Président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is back in session. Reprise de l'audience. And now the chamber will à hear présent, la chambre va entendre witness 2 TCW 909. Le témoin 2 TCW 909. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Are you ready? Good afternoon, Mr. President. I am waiting in the room. President, uh, what's your name, Mr. Witness? Answer, my name is Pai Sokha. President, thank you, Mr. Pai Sokha. When were you born? Answer, I was réponse, born on 10 November 1960. November 1960. President, thank President, you. Merci. Where's your current address? Quelle est votre address actuelle? Answer, réponse. I uh, am residing in Swai Jade Village, Plat Commune, on Long Wayne District. district Wayne, President, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Paisoka. What is your current merci. occupation, Quelle Mr. Soka? Answer, réponse. I am a physician said uh, the witness president je suis physicien dit le témoin what are your parents names answer my father's name is question quel est on. le nom de vos parents and uh, my mother's name is here they here are all deceased ils sont tous deux décédés president what is your wife's name and how many children Président, do you have together? Answer. My wife's femme? name is Kutnut. I have uh, four children. President, thank you, Président, Mr. Pesca. Based on the Soka, oral report of uh, the Grefier, la, le Gref to your knowledge, you have uh, no relation uh, with any party to the proceeding. Aucun Answer, lien, uh, yes, I have no any relationship with any parties to the proceeding. Réponse, exact. President, Président, before you give your testimony, I was told that you have already taken an oath. Answer, yes, I have exact. already Réponse, taken an oath. Oui, President, thank you very much. I would like to Président, inform you of your rights and obligation as a witness before the chamber. Mr. Pesaka, as a witness in the proceedings before Monsieur the chamber, Pesaka, you may refuse to respond to any question titre, or to make any comment which may incriminate you. That is your rights against self-incrimination. As for your obligation, Mr. Pesaka, as a witness in the proceeding before the chamber, you must uh, respond témoin, to any questions by the bench or relevant parties, par except where your response or comment to those questions may incriminate you, as the chamber has just informed you of your rights as a witness. As a witness, you must témoin. tell the truth that you have known, témoin, heard, seen, vérité, remembered, experienced, savez, vécu, or observed directly about an event or occurrence relevant to the questions that the bench or parties pose to you. Do you understand the rights and obligations which have just been informed to you? Witness. Yes, I have understood oui. them. President, thank President. you very much, uh, Mr. Pesaka. Have you ever been interviewed by investigator of the Office of Co-Investigating Judges? If so, how many times have si you gave, have you given your interview? Where did they take Et place? Où? Witness, I gave one interview. Moi, I uh, do not recall when uh, it was. The interview was held 
in the hospital at on Long Wayne. L'entretien a eu lieu à l'hôpital de Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pitsokha. Before you are sitting and giving the testimony before Merci, le président. the chamber, have you read and Avant review the written record of interview de comparaître, avez-vous pris connaissance à du procès verbal de l'audition qui a eu lieu à Anne Longwain Réponse. J'ai demandé à mon personnel de me mais comme je n'ai pas bonne mémoire, parce que je suis malade et que je ne suis pas en bonne santé, I am not also well at the current time. President, could you tell the chamber as for the statement which you asked your staff to read to you? Does the statement reflect what you gave to the investigator of the OCIJ? President. Hello, Mr. President, Pixoka. Monsieur Pexoka. Court officers, perhaps there is a technical Il semble y avoir un glitch. problème technique. Ce qui vous a été lu par votre Does personnel à votre this demande statement reflects reflète bien what you have Given to Ce que the vous avez dit aux enquêteurs, witness. yes, uh, the statement oui. reflects what I gave uh, to the investigator. Cela reflète bien ce que j'ai dit aux enquêteurs. Uh, President, the chamber would like to inform you, Mr. Pexaka, because you have La chambre uh, health of issue or problem, and if you souffrez, need to go to restroom si or relieve yourself, please inform the chamber. The chamber may allow you to de vous uh, relieve façon, yourself. Il vous en faut la chambre pour que Chim une President, vous être uh, based on rule 91 bis of the internal rule, the floor is first given to the investigator to the co-prosecutor, and the chamber would like to inform that uh, the co-prosecutor together with the civil party have a three sessions for this witness. Pour interroger ce témoin. You may not proceed, Vous avez la international co-prosecutor. Co Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon to Mr. Merci President, Monsieur your honors, Monsieur and everyone else in and around the courtroom. And good afternoon to you also, Mr. Petsoka. I'd like to start by asking you about your studies at the Rusei Keo School in Phnom Penh, which you discussed in your OCIJ statement. In that statement, you said that you were sent there in 1976 by a person named Sreng, who was the Sector 41 committee and a friend of your father. Why did Sreng send you to this school? Uh, in relation to this matter, I uh, do not know why I was sent uh, uh, to school. I was asked to go to school, uh, then I went anyway. 
Do you know whether the name Sreng was an alias or nickname or the person's real name? Était un pseudonyme, un surnom, un alias ou le nom de la personne? I do not know whether it is his alias name or it is his original name, but what I know is that uh, his name is String. Uh, does the name Cho Chan mean anything to you? Answer, I know the name Cham. Cham was the group uh, chief. Okay, and returning to Sreng for just a moment, can you tell the court what happened to him? Answer, I have no idea. I only knew this person and I do not know what happened to him. Okay, uh... Now, returning to the Cham, the, the person named Cham that you've just Genre mentioned, can you tell the court who Cham was and how you got to know him? Answer. As for Cham, I uh, knew this individual when I uh, went to study in Phnom Penh. I had known him before. I had not known him before. Question. Do you know why he was sent to the Rusei Kao school or who sent him? Answer, I have no idea. I was sent uh, to study in Rusei Kao, and uh, when I arrived there, I saw him there as well. I did not know who sent him there. Do you know what position he held or what job he did before he was sent to the school? Answer. I do not know. I only knew him when I arrived at uh, that school, and he was my group leader. And when you say he was your group leader, at what time was he your group leader? And where? Answer. When we went to specialized school, Lorsque he nous was my uh, group leader, and he remained de my group leader after school. De mon après Later in your OCIJ Ensuite, interview, you describe a person named Ta Cham as your Ta chairman Cham. at the first January Dam work site. Is that the same Ta Cham who was your classmate Ta at Rusei Kao school? Votre Camarade à l'école Rousseau Keo. Cham, answer yes. It was the same person. I knew only one person by the name Cham. Question. And you also indicated in your OCIJ statement that your classmates included a person named Long from Sector 42 and a person named Hao from Sector 43. Can you tell us who those people were and why they were sent to the Rusei Kao school, if you know? Actually, it, it was also the same as Cham case. I uh, do not know why these people were sent uh, to school there. We knew each other when we were in school. 
Later in your statement, you mention two people with the same names, Long and Hao, who disappeared from the first January Dam work site. Are those the same two people who were in your class at the Rusei Kao school? As I said, uh, I knew them when the, uh, we were in the Seikai school, and after uh, we left school, we worked together. Other than those three people, uh, Cham, Long, and Hao, do you remember any of your other Rusei Kao classmates? De oh, I do not recall the oh, others. I uh, do not recall any other friends or colleagues. Autre ami ou collègue. You also stated that during your time at the school, you were very severely tempered. What do you mean when you say that you were severely tempered? Beaucoup reforgés. When I said I was very severely tempered, it concerned my study and uh, the food we had. It does not have anything to do with uh, beating. Please hold on, uh, Mr. International Co Prosecutor. You may not proceed to counsel. Monsieur le Président, euh, vraiment juste une question de méthode. Euh, depuis tout à l'heure, euh, euh, Monsieur le procureur international euh, cite un certain nombre de passages de la déclaration en ne citant pas les URN. Quand il s'agissait simplement des noms propres, je ne suis pas intervenu, mais s'il y a des passages où on euh, soumet des déclarations antérieures aux témoins, j'aimerais qu'on puisse citer les URN pour que nous puissions suivre correctement. Merci. Uh, that is of relevance to proceedings. I would like uh, the co-prosecutor to give the ERNs. Thank you. President, uh, thank you. President, and the merci. deputy co-international prosecutor, uh, please follow the co uh, practice in this uh, courtroom. Thank you. I'll, I'll do that. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, I'd now like to ask you about your assignment to the first January dam work site. And you discuss receiving this assignment in your OCIJ statement. The reference in Khmer is 0038-9522. English is 0040-3003. And French is 0042-2237. And what you say is that in early 1977, they collected four of you to build the first January dam and that you were surveying technicians. Can you tell us who were the other three in this group of four surveying technicians besides yourself? And myself. Cham, Long, Hao, and, and we attended the school in Phnom Penh Nous together, and later on we were assigned to work at the first January Dam together. And who was it who assigned you to work at the first January Dam, and how did you receive the assignment? Cette, uh, 
Lorsque nous avons quitté l'école, nous avons demandé d'aller travailler au barrage du 1er janvier de travail du barrage du 1er janvier. Je ne savais pas de qui émanait cette instruction. Qui a dit que vous avez dit que vous alliez travailler sur ce chantier It was Cham, my group chief, Cham, who chef de told us about that. Qui nous a dit cela. Did you have any choice as to whether to accept the assignment? In other words, could you have refused the assignment if you had wanted to? Réponse. When you talk about a refusal, Vous parlez de refuser. Option. Je n'avais pas le luxe de pouvoir refuser quoi que ce soit. And why was it that you didn't have that luxury? Et pourquoi n'aviez-vous pas ce luxe Pour. Réponse. At that time, we could not à ce moment-là, Refused. We Nous had to follow the assignment that we were uh, given to. Et accomplir les missions qui nous étaient confiées. What did you think Question. would happen to you if you did not follow the assignment you were given? Que pensiez-vous qu'il risquait de vous arriver si vous ne respectiez pas les ordres? Bah. President. Le président interrompt. Uh, Council, uh, please uh, try not to use any hypothetical uh, uh, question. And witness, uh, please, uh, you do not need to respond to the last question put to you by the Deputy Co-Prosecutor. And uh, Mr. Deputy Co-Prosecutor, please try to uh, refresh your uh, question. Thank you, your, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'll, I'll move on to my next question. Can you tell the court uh, when you arrived at the first January dam work site and how long you remained there? I can recall that I worked for a bit over a Je year at the first January Dam website. And do you recall the date on which you arrived or the approximate date on which you arrived, month and year perhaps? I can recall it happened in 1977, but I cannot recall the date. As a member of your group of survey technicians, did you usually work alongside ordinary workers, or did you work primarily with the other survey technicians? I worked only within the surveying technicians. I mean, there, there were only four of us in that group. Did you ever help with the Question. manual labor at the site, with the digging and carrying of earth? Did you ever help with the manual labor at the site, with the digging and carrying of earth? That reactor was only occasional, and that Ce happened when we did not have any surveying work to do. Or sometimes we were required to assist them uh, to carry earth during the night time. And can you estimate how often it was, or how many times it was, that you helped with this kind of manual labor? during your year at the work site. Réponse. 
I cannot recall how many times uh, I did that because that was not the core task that I was assigned to do at the time. Okay, thank you for that. I'd now like to ask you a few questions about the plans for the work site, which you, you also mentioned in your uh, OCIJ statement. And the page reference in Khmer is 00389522 through 23. In English, it's 0040-3004. And in French, 00042239. And what you say is the following. You said, quote, I received the plans from the upper echelon, Ankar, unquote. So what exactly do you mean when you say that you received the plans from the upper echelon, Ankar? I uh, meant that the plan was not uh, made by us. It was done by the upper echelon, at which level I did not know, but we uh, received this plan from my group chief, and my group chief uh, received it from the upper echelon. And when you say your group chief, I assume you're referring to the CHAM that we were discussing earlier? Yes, that is correct. And do you know what person uh, your group chief CHAM received the plans from? That's what I just said. Réponse, I did not know from whom dire, he received, as I was uh, his uh, subordinate. And so what made Question. you think that the plan came from the upper Et echelon? Or what do you mean by the upper echelon in this context? During the time the upper echelon referred to Anka, and nobody knew who Anka was. Can you tell the court what the plans for the dam actually looked like? What were they physically? Were they drawings on a piece of paper? Was it a technical drawing, a model? What, what did you receive or what did you see? The plan was not uh, photographic. It was a sketch drawn on a paper. And was it just a single piece of paper, and how big was it? Une seule feuille. Était une feuille assez grande ou pas? The uh, paper size was about 60 by 80, and it was just a single sheet. Do you remember an individual named Sao? Uh, being involved in the construction of the first January dam or having the plans. No, uh, Sao, that name does not ring a bell. Réponse. Non, le nom de Sao ne me dit rien. I will try to pronounce it again. It's uh, Sauv. Uh, 
I don't know anyone by the je name pense. of San. Je ne, sais, je ne connais personne appelé San. Uh, National co -procurator. Le co-procureur national. Uh, I'd like to assist my colleague uh, with the name. Je the name is Sao, uh, Mr. President. Le nom est Sao, Monsieur le, le Président. No, I Je am pense. not familiar non, with that name. Ce nom ne me dit rien. Can you describe for the court in general terms what the first January dam was and what its purpose was, if you know, and again, only if you know? The general landscape of the first January dam was to It was for agricultural irrigation Ce through the nearby rice fields. That was the primary purpose. Là And de I do not know if there were any other purposes for the construction of that dam. In your interview with the OCIJ, and the page reference here is Khmer, 00389526 English 00403007-08 and French 00422238 You were asked whether the first January dam was 60 kilometers long and you said quote 60 kilometers did not include only the 1st January dam, but the 60 kilometers also linked to the 6th January dam, unquote. Can you give us a little more information about that? What were these two projects and how were they linked? As I said in my previous statement, the Comme distance of 60 kilometers long is the combined length of the two dams. And do you know what the purpose Question. of linking the two dams were or how they were linked to each other? I do not know uh, what the, the, the purpose of the linkage. I only did what I was assigned to do. However, the first January dam had been constructed before the 6th January dam, and later on the linkage was established. I'd like to now ask you a few questions Question. about uh, KPOC's visit to the 1st January Dam worksite, which you discuss also in your OCIJ interview. And the page reference here is Khmer 0038-9525-26, English 0040-3007-08. And French 0042-2242. And this is what you said. Quote, K-Pok came to control almost every day by Jeep with his two or three bodyguards. So we did not need to report to the upper echelon. But I did not know if K-Pok reported to the higher level or not. Tapok never scolded us. When he came, he always advised us to follow the plan properly, not to do anything deviant from the plan. We did not do anything different from the plan. At that time, Cham was my group chairman because he was older than me." Unquote. Can you tell us more about these occasions on which K-Pol 
In a brief, le the statement that you just read out is correct. Ce que vous venez de lire est exact. Thank you. Can you tell us a bit more Question. about these occasions Merci. when K-pop would come and tell you to follow the plan properly? Can you tell us, for example, where you were when he said this and who you were with when he made these statements? He told us Réponse. at the work site, uh, he told uh, the uh, four of us that we should strictly follow the guidelines and follow the plan and not to do anything deviant from the plan. And where were you at the work site? Were you outside? Were you in a public area? Or were you enclosed somewhere? We were uh, at where the general uh, workers uh, were, Nous that is, at uh, the work site. However, we was in a separate uh, shelter uh, from that of the general workers. And you said that he would come Question. almost every day. Et would he address your group of four surveyors almost every day? Cela veut-il dire qu'il s'adressait à votre groupe d'arpenteurs presque tous les jours également No. In Réponse, fact, he non. did not come to uh, to see us the uh, technical group every day, jours, but he hein. did come to inspect the dam construction almost every day. presque tous les jours. And on those occasions when he did come and speak to your group, did members of your group give him updates on the work? Yes, uh, we would respond to any question that he asked our group. And do you recall what Question. kinds of questions he would ask your group? He asked whether we did anything which were uh, not si in uh, the plan. And that basically plan. was his uh, main point. Uh, did your group leader, uh, Cham, ever tell you anything about how he felt about k pop or do you know anything about the relationship between those two men? No, I don't. As I said, I uh, knew them only when I attended uh, the study session in Phnom Penh. So in the same answer I was just reading from Question. before, Dans you also described k as, quote, the central zone committee and the overall manager of the construction site, unquote. How did you know that Kepoak was the overall manager of the construction site? At that time, they made an announcement on a loudspeaker before the commencement of the work at the work site, and that was the message played over the loudspeaker. And how did you know that KPOC was also the central zone committee? Again, the, uh, that message was broadcast through Réponse. the uh, loudspeaker at the commencement of the dam work site, and I did not know him or know about his position previously. Je ne pas auparavant. Je ne pas ses 
When he would come on these visits to the dam worksite to check progress, do you know how long he would stay? Approximately. I can I recall as I did not make any uh, observation or waited to see him and constantly our team was on a, a mobile doing the surveying of the land the landscape okay thank you I'd like to ask you now about something that you may have just referred to and that is a opening ceremony of the dam construction. And you described this in your OCIJ interview in Khmer, page 0038-9527, in English, page 0040-3008, and French, page 0042-2243. And this is what you said, quote, I recall that there was an opening ceremony of the dam construction participated by the zone secretary and the sector chairman. As for the senior leaders from the center, I did not see their participation. During the opening of the construction site, four of us also joined to listen with people, unquote. Now, here you're referring to a zone. Yes, uh, th this is uh, my uh, statement that I made early, and that's what I saw during that dit, particular ceremony. And I assume when you're referring to the zone secretary here, that is uh, Cape Walk, correct? Yes. Can you tell us the names of the sector chairman who participated in that ceremony, if you recall? Over the uh, loudspeaker announcement, I heard Réponse. about the uh, participation of people from sector 41, 42, and 43, respectively. 41, 42, Did you hear uh, an announcement Question. of the names of those sector chairmen? Les noms de ces chefs de secteur ont-ils été également annoncés? No, I cannot recall that. And can you tell us, as best you can recall, Question. everything that you remember being said at that opening ceremony? From my recollection, Réponse. The, uh, it was about uh, the day of the opening of the construction worksite dammed and that we should uh, try to work hard. Was anything said about the importance of the project or the speed with which it was to be completed? Cannot recall that. Réponse, je ne m'en souviens pas. I'd like to Question. ask you now about the visit of foreign delegations to the dam. And you also discussed this in your statement at page, uh, in Khmer page 0038-9527, in English page 0040-3008. To 09, and French page 0042-2244. And this is what you say, quote, I saw Chinese and Korean guests coming to see and take photos, and then they returned. 
unquote. And when asked to accompany these foreigners, she said, quote, the zone committee and others I did not know. Unquote. And just for clarity, the zone committee you're referring to here is K-pop, correct? Whatever uh, I uh, said in my previous statement uh, is correct. Tout ce que j'ai dit dans ma déclaration précédente est exact. Did you ever learn the names or identities of any of the Chinese or Korean guests who came to the work site? Did you ever Chinois or others who came to the work site? No, I don't. Réponse, no. Okay, I, I'd now like to ask you a couple of questions Question. about the Je fate of two of your classmates from the Rusei Kao school in Phnom Penh, the two people named Long and Hao. Long and Hao. And in your OCIJ statement at page 00389524-25 in Khmer, page 00403006 in English, and page 00422241 in French. You were asked a question about the arrests of people accused of being enemies, and you said the following, quote, as for me, I never came across. But in my group, two people named Long and Hao disappeared. Both of them were summoned by Ankar to return. Both of them showed me the letter and said goodbye to me. The letter was handwriting. Both of them were well educated. I learned a lot from them. I just knew after the reintegration that both of them were arrested and killed." Unquote. So can you tell us how you learned that Long and Hao were arrested and killed? Initially, I did not know However, later on, I conclude that if uh, they survived, then I would receive information about them because uh, they were my friends, but I uh, presumed that uh, they died. Now, you gave that answer in response to a question about the arrest of people accused of being enemies. Did you ever have any reason to think that Long and Hao had been accused of being enemies? As I said from the outset, they said Comme goodbye to me and left, and I did not know, and I thought that they returned to their native village, and I presumed that they died because I have never seen them again. You also said that they had uh, handwritten letters summoning them to return, and that they showed the letters to you. Do you remember what the letter said? I cannot However, I was shown the letter that, that uh, they would be transferred back to their original location. And I wish them well, and they uh, said that I should try to uh, focus and work hard. Okay, I'll, I'll move on to another portion of your OCIJ interview. And this quote is from uh, page, in, in Khmer page, 0038-9527, English 0040-3008, and French 0042-2243-44.
And this is what you said about your experience. Voici Quote, ce que vous dites. Every day they played revolutionary songs at the site. It looked like it was happy. They played songs everywhere, but in fact, it was very difficult in eating and staying, and there were health problems. But nobody dared to say. Now, if I look back, it was terrifying. I should not have survived until this time." Unquote. So in that quote, you describe your experience as terrifying. What made the experience terrifying for you? That is what I uh, said uh, earlier. That is uh, the overall image. It seems that it was a happy act. But in reality, everything was horrible. The food was insufficient, and the uh, manual labor was hard. So other than the food and the manual labor, was there anything else that, that made you describe this as a terrifying or, as you've just said now, horrible experience? That's what I knew. And that what I felt at the time. You also say that you should not have survived. You said, quote, I should not have survived until this time, unquote. Why, why do you think, or why are you surprised that you survived your time at the first January Dam work site? It's because uh, of the manual labor. If uh, we work day and night uh, with uh, insufficient food given, it was not reasonable for us uh, to survive. And you also said that no one dared to say anything about problems. I'll ask you to focus just on yourself, though. Why, why did you never complain about these problems, about the food or the manual labor? We could not complain at the current time. Uh, we uh, worked hard in order to survive. And maybe that's a, a useful comparison. You've just said we cannot complain as in the current time. What was it about that time that meant you were not free to express your views in the way you feel free to express them today? During that period, uh, my group had only four of us, so uh, we would do the work as we were assigned, and other people would do the, the work that they were assigned, and no one complained. Did any other people ever tell you why they didn't dare to complain? It is beyond my knowledge. I have no idea. What I knew is the work that my group was doing at that time. So can I just ask you, what did you subjectively fear? What were you afraid of? I, 
did not know réponse. what I was afraid of, but we were striving to work. Mais nous essayons de faire notre travail. I'm going to read another quote from your interview. Uh, the page reference for this is Khmer 0038-9525, English 0040-3006-07, and French 0042-2241. And this is what you said. You said, quote, I, Hao, and Long did not attend meetings or have a discussion. We just had a chat. At that time, I felt miserable, but I did not know what to do. We did not dare to say we had better just act like deaf and dumb or grow kampok trees. I did not want anything. I just wanted to survive, unquote. So can you tell us what you meant when you said that you had better act deaf and dumb in the context of saying you just wanted to survive? Why was it necessary to act deaf and dumb? I remember this message from my teacher. I was young at that time, and I asked my teacher about the regime. My teacher asked me to remember that plea, act like dumb, deaf and dumb in order to survive. That's what I remembered. I uh, did not have any uh, deep view about politics. That was actually what I was going to ask you about next, and I'd like to read the full question and your full answer from your interview. Uh, and this follows on. This is the question after the one I just read. So the question you were asked in your interview was, quote, you said that you did not dare to have a discussion. <coughs> did you know anything about people being sent for execution?" Unquote. And your answer was, my teachers told me that for communism, just do what we were told to do. Do not challenge them. You had to grow kampok trees to survive. If we had ideas for change or gave ideas, we would be in trouble." Unquote. And you've just mentioned getting that message from your teacher again. Can you tell us which teacher told you that? Answer. I constantly ask the permission from my teacher to have uh, the session at their home or at his home. He advised me uh, this matter, that what I remember since then. And did you understand this as advice or as a threat? Or what? How did you understand what your teacher said? Answer. It was his advice. He wanted me to be safe because he knew that I was a very young at that time. Now, the reason that I read the question just now was because I wanted to ask you why you gave the response in response to this particular question. And the question again was, did you know about people being sent for execution? 
and your answer was, my teachers told me, just do what we're told to do, don't challenge them. Why did you give that answer in response to a question about executions? Answer. I did not witness the execution. I learned about the execution at the current time. During uh, that period, uh, there was no uh, information at all, and we could not uh, walk freely. This is what my uh, teachers told me. Is it fair to say that you intentionally tried to avoid finding out about bad things if you could help it? I was not trying en fait, to avoid a bad thing. But I do not know. So the last thing you indicated your teacher said was, quote, if we had ideas for change or gave ideas, we would be in trouble, unquote. So what did you understand him to mean by saying that you would be in trouble if you had ideas for change or gave ideas? Answer. In my understanding, we should not speak of any matter. We needed to plant the compost tree in order to survive. That what I learned in that period. And what matters in particular are you talking about? Are you talking about political matters or something else? When I said, uh, when I was referring to Kampok trees, Lorsque je parle de l'arbre compost, not concerned about any other matter. We needed to do the work that we were assigned to do. D'autres choses que le travail que nous devions faire. So you've you've told us today that you found the manual labor to be very difficult. That the food was insufficient, and you've described the conditions as well as horrible. Given all of that, did you ever try to leave the first January Jam work site? And if you did, what happened? And if you did not, why not? Answer. I do not know how to explain and give my response. If you were me, you would have been even afraid more than me. And can you tell us why you were afraid to try to leave the work site? Answer. I do not know where to escape. I was very young at that time, and I uh, did not know the geographical area at that time, and I do not know where uh, to escape. Okay. Uh, I'd like to now move on to a question about the, the size of the workforce at the 1st January Dam. 
And again, I'll be reading from your OCIJ interview, Khmer page 0038-9523, English 0040-3004-0040. To zero five and French zero zero four two 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 three nine. So at that point, you were asked. Uh, at that point in your interview, you were asked how many people joined in building the first January dam. And you said the following, quote, based on what I heard from the loudspeakers, they said the participating forces were 10,000 people from Sector 42, 1,000 people from the mobile units in Sector 41, and 10,000 people from Sector 43. So in total, there were forces of more than 20,000 people, unquote. Is that an announcement that you heard just once on the loudspeaker, or would you regularly hear these kinds of announcements at the work site? Answer, I heard only once during the time of inauguration ceremony. And in your position as a surveyor, were you ever, ever able to learn anything about the way uh, workers on other teams were organized? Did you learn anything about the size of their teams or their groups or anything like that? Answer, I have no idea. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I'd now like to pass the floor to my colleague, the National Deputy Co-Prosecutor. President, thank you. You may not receive. Co-Prosecutor, good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours. Everyone in and around the courtroom. Good afternoon, Mr. Paikka. I still have a few questions in relation to working conditions. Document E3, class 403. Khmer Uh, Your Honor, could you please uh, ask the co-prosecutor to repeat uh, Ian once again? Uh, the document uh, was uh, recorded by the OCIJ and the work was uh, divided to groups and uh, earth had to be carried and uh, placed on the dam. I would like to know who divided uh, uh, the work condition, or who divided the work uh, plan. Witness, I uh, do not know who divided the work plan, but uh, normally there was announcement over the loudspeaker. I do not know who divided the work plan. Question, based on your answer, you gave uh, to the chamber. La chambre, As a surveyor, uh, you also worked with other vous avez workers. Avec I would like to know how far was it uh, from the place where you uh, carried us to the dam? Answer. The, it, it was not uh, really far. It was about uh, 50 meters away. We had to dig the earth and carry it to put on the dam. Question. What about the soil condition? Was it hard or soft? Answer. The work was not always 
easy or difficult, so the soils are condition varied. Question. So if uh, the work was difficult, the soil condition was not uh, good for you, so how difficult was it? Answer. Some soil had rock. Question. So if uh, the soil that had rock, did it impact on the work quota that uh, you were assigned to do? Answer. Actually, uh, for those who dig uh, the soil which had the rock, uh, these people uh, did not uh, receive any punishment uh, before people were assigned to uh, dig the soil. Uh, they used the bamboos to see whether the soil was uh, solid or soft. Question, what about the work plan? Was the work plan equal to each other? Was the work quota equal to, each, to uh, every workers? Rather? Answer, actually the work plan was that uh, worker has to complete and carry two cubic meter of land. Question. Did you ever see anyone refused the work quota? Answer, I have no idea uh, because I was engaged in the carrying earth once in a while. President, uh, you, I noticed you are on your feet. You may not see Council for Mr. Pearson Paul. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Juste un Thank you, Mr. rappel de, rap uh, de marquer une pause like, uh, entre la question et la réponse, parce que les um, deux interlocuteurs sont clairophones, et la, j'ai l'impression qu'en termes de traduction, c'est compliqué. Et donc, en français, comme here, nous venons en troisième lieu, je crois que c'est difficile. It's hard for us to receive the French translation on time. President, thank you, Council. Actually, I uh, did not advise the, interna the National Co Prosecutor through the microphone, but I uh, made a signal to him. So please, Council, Co Prosecutor, uh, please uh, give, uh, keep pause between question and answer. Co Prosecutor, uh, I saw your signal uh, how, and I tried to slow down and I will uh, keep more space for interpretation. Co-procutor, concerning the work quota, have you ever not completed uh, the work quota? Answer. I uh, was not part of the core force carrying soil or earth. I was the surveyor. I do not know whether workers could complete or achieve the work quota. Question. When you were assigned to work as other did. Did you receive the same quota as other workers did, or was it your extra job? President, please hold on, Mr. Winners. Mr. Copé, you may not proceed. Um, I think this is the third time that National Co Prosecutor is trying to ask questions about tasks that um, this witness only incidentally. Um, fulfilled. Um, he made it very clear that he was a group of four surveyors, uh, so he doesn't have anything substantial to say on the content. I think he repeated that uh, already several times, so I don't see the point in uh, repeating this question. So I object to the question being repetitive. Prosecutor. I think that the 
the witness gave Je answer already that he joined uh, the work carrying uh, and he was involved de la terre in the work. So I just would like to know about the work donc, that uh, this witness was doing, President. The objection is overruled. Witness, please respond to the question put uh, to you by co-prosecutor. The chamber needs to hear the answer. Witness. I would like to tell the court that Carrying Earth was not my core work. I was assigned uh, to uh, carry Earth once in a while, and the work quota was not the same as other, that is, uh, two cubic meters. So when the, the working hours ended, uh, we stopped working. Co-prosecutor in document E3 slash 403 Ian Ninh Khmer is 00389524. English Ian is at 00403006. French Ian is at 00422240. You stated that at night time you worked from 6.30 p.m. until 10 p.m. You stated that workers had to complete the work quota, and for those who were sick, they could not complete the work quota. And for night and if uh, some worker could not complete si the work quota at night time, they had to do the work at night to complete it. Presentation. From your experience, did you notice that uh, workers continue working at night time if they could not uh, complete the work quota, or they could complete uh, the work quota at daytime? Witness. I have no full detail of uh, this matter. Once in a while, workers were asked uh, to strive to work hard, uh, but uh, workers mostly worked during the daytime. Co-prosecutor. So when did the work began Alors, quand during daytime, and when did the work end? Answer. Réponse. From my recollection, work started from 7 a.m. until 11 a.m. And, and it started again from Et 1 p.m. in the afternoon until 5 p.m. Question. In relation to food ration, you stated earlier that there was no enough food to eat. I would like to know what did you have for your meal? Answer. Réponse. I do not want to tell the story of others, but for Je myself, sometimes I had the cooked parfois, rice with uh, cassava and banana stem. For this reason, I said I did not have uh, enough food to eat. It was different from the current time. During uh, the time today, we could have coffee or noodles or rice. Question. Based on your observation, did anyone die from starvation? Answer. From my observation, I never witnessed anyone die from starvation. Those who fell sick uh, were sent 
to uh, be treated at the hospital. Co-prosecutor, um, Mr. President, I still have a few more questions, two or three, and it will take only five minutes. Co-prosecutor, was there uh, enough medicines uh, for uh, those who fell sick during that period? Answer, during that period, I was not a medic at that time, so I uh, could not say that uh, the medicine was enough or not. The medicine uh, could be used to treat uh, abdominal pain or headache. Question in order to assist your uh, response. Allow me to ask whether the medics were skillful or whether they were properly trained. And uh, it is difficult for me to respond to that question as to whether they were properly trained. And we were all dressing in black uh, uniform, although they were uh, so-called medics. Même si ils étaient appelés prétendument médecins. On the reason, and you stated earlier that your group stayed separately from other workers. What was the sleeping arrangement for your group? Where did you sleep, for instance? Answer. Réponse. We did not stay like kilometers away from the workers. However, we had a, a separate autres, building or a shelter for our group, although it was uh, of a different nature from other buildings for the workers. It was uh, made out of uh, bamboo. Question, I'd like to bamboo. know about the uh, condition of the uh, accommodation and the way logement. you make the sleeping arrangement. Answer. I do not know what else I can uh, tell you from what I have just said. The uh, building was uh, separate from the buildings for the uh, workers, although it was separate, but it was not far, and the sleeping floor was made out of uh, bamboo. It was nothing special. Question. Question. Were there mosquito nets, pillows, y or sleeping mats as what we have for today? Answer. Oh, come on, how can you compare the situation there to the situation ah, now? Donc, you cannot do it. La situation de, question, avec la please situation respond directly to question. my question. Répondre à ma question vous plaît? Were there mosquito nets, blankets, pillows, sleeping mats? Moustiquaires, they were provided uh, to you. Ce matériel vous a-t-il été fourni? Answer. For my group, Réponse. we uh, had a bed in the building, but uh, actually we slept in uh, hammocks. Groupe, Although we did not spend much time sleeping in the uh, in that uh, shelter or building, we nous mostly slept at the work site. Question. You said you did not uh, sleep or stay far from the workers. What was your observation regarding the uh, sleeping condition of the uh, workers? Answer. From what I observed, they live uh, jointly in a long bamboo made uh, building. And male and female were uh, separate. Were separated in the, uh, separate buildings. President Council Copper, uh, what's on your mind? Um, well, the answer has been given, so I don't have any objection Maître anymore. But, um, National Co prosecutor is asking questions about um, sleeping conditions of about 20,000 people. Um, I think that's beyond the knowledge of this uh, witness. So I think um, 
the National Court Prosecutor should be much more specific when he asks questions. As we know, he must have been listening to the witness this morning. Uh, things could probably vary per group of individuals coming from separate villages. So I think uh, when asking about conditions, be it food, be it uh, shelter, of the workers, of the 20,000 workers in general, the National Court Prosecutor should be quite specific um, as to which group of people he refers to. President, President. and the uh, co-prosecutor, please move on in the Khmer uh, uh, channel. The line of question is for his observation for those workers living nearby his sleeping quarter, not about all the workers at the work site. And this kind of question is permissible. And Deputy Co Prosecutor, you may continue. Prosecutor, I don't have any more questions, Mr. President. President, thank you. Today's hearing is now concluded. The Chamber will adjourn and resume tomorrow, that is Thursday, 21st May 2015, commencing from 9 o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow, the Chamber will continue to hear the testimony of witness Bezoka via a video link. The information is for the uh, parties and Je the general public. And thank you, Mr. Paisoka. The hearing of your testimony as a witness is not yet concluded. Votre and you are invited to uh, return again to uh, that same office for your testimony tomorrow, commencing from 9 o'clock in the morning. You may now rest, uh, Mr. Paisoka. Paisoka, thank you, Mr. President. President, the security the personnel, you are instructed to take the two accused back to the detention facility and have them return to attend the proceedings tomorrow before 9 o'clock in the morning. The court is now adjourned.